Okay guys, so in this video I'm going to be showing you how to create really nice dynamic black and white photos which you can apply to your photography or you can apply to anything else that you want to make black and white. So what we're going to do first is we're going to head over to our channel mixer. Now what you want to do first is click on monochrome and alright if you wanted to stick with that you could. You could say yeah that'll do black and white picture. But what we're going to do is we're going to adjust some of the settings and we're going to adjust some of the shadows and the highlights of this image to really bring out the depth, the shadows and the highlights. So what you want to do first is you want to bring down the blues. Now you start to already get that kind of moody, darker look. Now, now granted the picture looks quite flat, but we're going to sort that out by adjusting the greens and the reds. So we want to bring up the greens and we want to bring up the reds as well, but not too much. Now what you can do here is you can adjust the constant here at the bottom. Now this is similar to levels, so you can have kind of really overexposed, underexposed, but you still get to keep some of the image detail. Now, preferably, you'd want to do these effects with a RAW file. Now, I'm using a JPEG image as this isn't the photo I've taken myself. But if you're going to be editing your own photography, I'm assuming you'd be using a RAW file. So I think that looks pretty good right now. So what you want to do is you want to click back onto your image, go to Image, Adjustments, and then Shadows and Highlights. Now, what I do is I bring the shadows all the way down, and I put the highlights all the way up. Now what you get here is you get this really sharp clarity on the image. Now, you can adjust the radius as much as you want, or the tonal width, and that will allow you to really kind of customise how, just how clear and how much clarification you want on your image. Now, I do like adjusting it sometimes, so maybe change the shadows a bit, and adjust the highlights as well, just so you get a bit more highlight on the image. And of course, you can change the mid-tone contrast as well. If you don't see these settings, you need to click Show More Options on the little pop-up window here. And it's all really just about playing with the settings and getting the most detail out of the image that you can. Now obviously we don't want to underexpose the image, so it's really crucial to make sure you get a really nice kind of fiddle around with the settings to make sure that you get a desired image. Now I think that looks pretty good. So we've got a really nice kind of moody black and white image here. And what you can do if you want to is you can add a colour lookup, which is on Photoshop CS. Photoshop CS6. If you don't have um, Color Lookup because you have a previous version of Photoshop, it's pretty much the same thing as adding an image, uh, going on the adjustments and adding a photo filter. But what I'm going to be adding is the candlelight and then putting it on dark color and just adjusting the opacity so we get this kind of nice sepia sort of look. Now, in comparison to if we just went to image adjustments and desaturate, you can see that there is a huge difference with this image. So let's see how it works on a picture of, say, a car. So we're going to do the same steps again. We're going to go to cut Channel Mixer, Monochrome, and then we're going to bring down the blues, bring up the greens and the reds, and we'll adjust the contrast. Now, the, mo the most important point is getting those shadows and getting the image. So if you've got clouds in your image, you really want to bring those out as well. Now, because this is a JPEG image, there's a bit of kind of damage in the picture up here. I'll, I'll, if I adjust this, you can see maybe the um, the lines there on the image. So we're just going to have to hide those by being quite clever with these levels here. So already you've got quite a nice moody black and white image. So again, we'll click on our image, go to Image, Adjustments and shadows and highlights and we'll do the same thing again so we'll bring the shadows all the way down highlights all the way up and you see because it's a JPEG image and not a RAW you start to get this kind of damage on the image now what you're going to have to do is you're just going to have to play around with the settings making sure that the damage isn't really visible so if you do have a JPEG image then unfortunately that's what you're going to have to do if, you, if you're using RAW then you should be fine and there shouldn't be any damage to the picture at all so I think it's going to have to be quite a lot to do with the shadows and the highlights. If we just adjust this a bit here, like so. Maybe just the radius there. But it's all to do with your own personal preference and how you want your image to look. After all, it is your photography. 
But I'm hoping these tips have helped you to get that really nice moody depth to a black and white image that you wanted without simply clicking on image desaturate. Let's just see how this looks with the colour lookup that we mentioned earlier. We'll add the candlelight, put it on dark and colour. Yeah, and I mean, that looks really nice in my opinion. So I've got the previous image as well. I think this is actually a little bit different to how, yeah, that's how I actually edited it. So, as you can see, you do get a really nice kind of dark image. And it does look really nice and has a nice bit of depth and a nice bit of mood to your image. I mean, it depends entirely on the photography you're doing. But if you're wanting to create a mood atmosphere, a moody atmosphere, sorry, then this is some effects you really want to add. So thank you for watching this Photoshop tu tutorial. Next week I'm going to be doing a poster tutorial. So those of you who like my minim minimalist poster series, it's going to give you a little insight on how in my kind of creation process and what I do to kind of prepare myself for the posters. Um, it probably won't be so much of a tutorial, more of a guidance video saying about what you guys need, what you guys might want to be looking at before you start your poster. And then some hints and tips kind of, of when you're actually designing it. Of course, I can't actually tell you how to design it because all films are different. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Remember to give this video a like if you like the Photoshop tutorial. Share as well. And I hope this video has been useful.